maybe you just got a sewing machine for Christmas or maybe you just went out and bought one because you really want to start sewing. But it is so intimidating to start sewing. How do you thread the machine? What are all these things that come with it? And just how does it work in general, right? So I'm here today to help you out and get you sewing. So if you watch to the end of this video, you are going to be up and running with your sewing machine today. So exciting. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is unbox it and plug it in and turn it on. It's gonna light up for you. And then you're gonna need to get some thread. So you just wanna make sure you're using all purpose thread. It can be the big spools, it can be the small spools, it can be any spool size. Just make sure it's not that shiny, beautiful embroidery thread or a really thick, heavy top stitching thread. Just make sure you're using an all purpose thread. Now that you've got your thread, let's thread the machine. So your machine might look a little bit different, but they all thread the exact same way. So I'm gonna go over it on this machine and then you can follow along on your machine. And if you are having any troubles, it's always a great idea to reference your manual. And if your machine didn't come with one for some reason, you can totally find it online. So on this machine, I'm going to lift up the top of it and you can see I've got all the parts up here for threading. So here is my spool holder. Mine lifts up and down and I'm going to put the thread on here and I'm also going to go ahead and put a thread cap on here so that way it doesn't come off. So now we are going to come over and now what you do is you follow the grooves on your machine. So we come over, we come down, we come back up. I can't see backwards. And now we're gonna go around a little hook in here. And if you can't get it, move your hand wheel. You'll notice that the hand wheel moves this little hook in here and it also moves the needle. So your hand wheel at the side of your machine is really important for threading. So make sure that the hook is in the top position and wrap it around. And now you wanna get above the needle. So this is really important that the thread is going to be right in front of the needle. So this little hook above the needle, your thread needs to go behind it. And now when you thread your machine, the thread always goes front to back. So it's always a great idea to clip the thread, make it nice and clean, get rid of any little fuzzies that are there. And you want to go ahead and just stick it through the eye of the needle. And some machines nowadays have semi-automatic or automatic threaders, which are amazing. So if you have one of those, definitely take advantage of it. And then your thread always goes under the foot to the back. So don't leave your thread hanging out in front. Don't leave it over to the side and make sure it's in the little slit of your foot and pulled to the back. And this is going to prevent your thread from knotting up when you start sewing. Threading the machine might take a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it is so easy and you're going to be threading your machine in like two seconds. If you're new to sewing, you might not know this, the machine actually uses thread from the top and the bottom. And the bottom thread is called the bobbin. So we need to manually wind the bobbin. It doesn't pull the thread to the bottom of the machine or anything. So every time you wanna change your color, you're gonna to have to wind a new bobbin. So the bobbin is always in the bottom of the machine. Machines either have top loading bobbins or bottom loading bobbins. And this one here has a top loading bobbin that drops in. So I'm going to remove the bobbin lid here and pull that off. And then there's going to be like a little mini spool of thread in there basically. So we're going to pull that out. So your bobbin is going to look something like this. It looks like a mini spool of thread. And you're going to have to create one of these every time you start a new project with a new color of thread. Because you want to make sure you have the same thread in your bobbin as you do in your top thread. So all machines have a bobbin winder on them. They're all in a little bit of a different spot. But you're going to have this little knob over here on the right of your machine and that's to wind your bobbin. So you're going to take your bobbin and you're gonna place it on the little knob there. Make sure it's nice and flat and pushed all the way down. And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna pull it over to this little tension disc that's on here. And this is gonna tell the machine that you're in bobbin winding mode. So when you push it over, you're in a sewing mode. And when you pull it all the way over to that tension disc, you're in bobbin winding mode. Okay, so what you wanna do is take the thread. We're gonna unthread the machine here. So basically, no matter what bobbin winding mechanism you have on the top of your machine, the thread always comes over and then it basically makes a U-turn. There's always some sort of tension disc. This one has a tension disc right here. Some of the machines too, they have a little diagram on the top of them. And now we're gonna go ahead and take the thread and wrap it around clockwise about five or six times. 
And then there's always a thread cutter somewhere where you can cut off your extra thread. I've got one right here on mine. And now you can step on your pedal or you might have a start button on the front and it's gonna wind it up. So mine's not winding right now because I didn't create enough tension there. So it came undone. So we're just going to create that tension there. And now it's going to wind up the bobbin. You wanna wind your bobbin up so it's at least half full. So I'm just gonna wind it up that much here for the demo. And now you gotta get that bobbin off. So you gotta take it and push it back into sewing mode and then pull it off and you can cut it with your thread cutter or just cut it with your scissors. So the bobbin is going to go in the drop-in bobbin case down here. And now, no matter what machine you have, if it's a little bit newer, you're gonna have some sort of arrows or diagram on here where this thread goes. Mine has three little arrows to follow. So it comes over, it goes around these two little hooks because I've got two little arrows there. And then it just hangs out in the front and then I put the lid on, there's a little thread cutter there and I pull it. And now when I start sewing, the thread's automatically gonna come up to create my stitches. So on all the new machines, your thread is automatically gonna come up when you start sewing. So that's how you wind the bobbin. So no matter if your machine is 100 years old, it's a brand new home sewing machine, it's an industrial sewing machine, it's going to have a bobbin winder on the front of it somewhere. So before we start sewing, we need to make sure we have a foot on our sewing machine. That's right, it's called a foot. So you need to make sure you have one on here. It should come with an all-purpose general foot on it. And you're gonna use this one for about 90% of your sewing projects. Your machine's also gonna come with some additional feet. You're probably like, what the heck are these? They look really weird. Um, but this one is your buttonhole foot. This one's your overcasting foot. This one's your decorative stitch foot or satin foot. This one is your blind hem foot. And this one's your all-purpose zipper foot. Yours might look a little bit different depending on the brand, but they look generally like this. So for today, you're just gonna keep on your all-purpose foot so we can get sewing some seams. If you'd like to change your feet, all you need to do is pull it forward and it pulls right off the little clip there that's holding the foot on. Or your machine might have a little button in back that you push and it releases the foot. And then when you need to put the foot back on, you just lower the pressure foot down on it and it clicks on. So you have two different ways you might be attaching your feet to a machine. Either way, it's super easy to do. So we got our top thread on, we got our bobbin in, we got a foot on, we are ready to sew. So I'm gonna start sewing right now and I'm gonna be giving you more information that you're going to need to be able to start sewing. So right now we are gonna do the most basic thing ever in sewing, which is attaching two pieces of fabric together. And what we're going to be creating is a seam. So that's attaching two pieces of fabric together. Now, before we do that, we got some things to look for. So we wanna figure out how far do we place our fabric back and how far to the right or the left are we placing our fabric. So you're gonna have a guide on your foot. There's a horizontal line and that's where the back of your fabric goes. And now you're gonna wanna pick a guide over here on the right, depending on your seam allowance. So your seam allowance is gonna be all the extra fabric to the right of where your stitch is at. And to keep our layers together, I'm gonna take a pin and go in and out. We're gonna place the pin horizontally. And you wanna make sure you never sew over your pins. So I have my fabric placed over to the half inch, which means that's gonna be all the extra fabric from the stitch over to the right. So when you're sewing a pattern, it might say you need a half inch seam allowance. So that means you need to place the edge of the fabric at the half inch. So right now you're gonna notice that your foot is up in the air and you can't sew with your foot up in the air. So you're gonna use either the lever on the back of your machine to pull it down, or you might have a button on the front of your machine to put your foot up and down. So we wanna make sure that the back of the fabric is right at that horizontal line on your foot because we wanna start sewing at the very edge of the fabric so that way we don't end up with a gap in our seam. And now what you can do is step on the pedal. I want you to come a couple stitches forward and then we need to lock this in place. It's so important that this doesn't fall apart. So we have to hit the back stitch button on our machine and we're gonna do a couple back stitches. And now release the back stitch and you're just gonna keep sewing all the way down. Now it's really important that you hold your fabric so that way you can control it because your fabric is gonna go everywhere unless you control it. So when I sew, I'm not looking at the needle, I'm looking at my guide over to the right so that way I know I'm gonna have a nice even seam. When you get to the bottom of your project, you also need to backstitch again. 
and then you're done. So you can lift up your foot and pull out your fabric. And you wanna give yourself a nice long thread tail, at least like five inches and then cut because you need a nice long thread here. So that way when you start sewing again, it doesn't come unthreaded. So just take it and pull it to the back and now you're ready to start on your next seam. So when you're done sewing, you're gonna notice you're gonna have a thread on the top and the bottom of every single seam that you create. And these threads, you can just cut them off right flat with the fabric because you did the back stitch. So the back stitch is preventing the seam from falling apart. We did it, we sewed two pieces of fabric together. So the inside looks like this. This flappy little bit of fabric is your seam allowance. That's that half inch of extra. And then on the outside, you have a nice clean seam. You did it, you can now sew and use your sewing machine. So exciting. But what are you going to start sewing now that you have a sewing machine? Well, I have some great project ideas that I use in my Sewing 101 classes. I've got full video tutorials for them. So I totally suggest making a zipper pouch. I totally suggest making a pin cushion for your wrist or a tank top, which is so easy to make, believe it or not. So make sure you check out those videos and those could be your first projects as well. Links for those are going to be down below in the description. So make sure you check them out. And if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help, make sure you check out my virtual lessons. You can sign up for those at sewingastasia.com. So if you're watching this and you just got your first sewing machine, I am so excited for you because I remember when I got my first sewing machine and it was so exciting to be able to sew things and create things and wear them and have people compliment me on them. And it was just the greatest feeling in the world. So I am so excited for you and your first sewing machine. I would love to see your first sewing projects, no matter how small or big they are. I would love to share them with everyone else and inspire everyone else to start sewing as well. So make sure you tag Sew Anastasia in those sewing projects so I can share them. Thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, give it some applause and leave a comment down below. If you've been sewing for a while, what was your first sewing project? Leave it down below so you can inspire all the new sewers that are watching. And if you're not already a subscriber to Sew Anastasia, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that way you know when all the new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching today. And don't forget to add me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok because I'm always putting out new inspirational sewing content. So let's stay creative and inspired together. And don't forget, I teach sewing classes in my design studio here in Chicago, Illinois, and you can also take them virtually. So make sure you check that out at sewingastasia.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.